If you think that mechanical engineering is all about designing cars, airplanes, robots, or the phone or computer you are using to watch this video, then you're wrong. Actually, let me rephrase that. You aren't wrong, but you aren't right either. Because mechanical engineering is so much more than designing tangible things and mechanical systems. Many YouTube videos and websites out there fail to give a full picture of what mechanical engineering is at its core and what it's actually like. This might create a false impression or make it impossible for any of you to determine if mechanical engineering is actually right for you. That's why I decided to make this video to clear up any confusion and tell you what mechanical engineering is exactly based on my experience working with mechanical engineers across the tech, automotive, and consumer electronics industries from all over the world, so keep watching. If you were to randomly pick 20 or 30 professional mechanical engineers from different companies and industries, ask them to describe their day-to-day -day responsibilities of their current role, there will be overarching elements or things in common, but I can assure you that all of their answers would be unique. There are hundreds if not thousands of different titles for mechanical engineering roles. To prove my point, let's look at three different companies from three different industries. In the automotive industry, we have Tesla. Their mechanical engineering titles include mechanical engineer, mechanical design engineer, mechanical test engineer, senior cell mechanical engineer, mechanical reliability engineer, the list goes on. If we take a look at ANSYS, who develops engineering simulation software and services, their titles include mechanical application engineer, R&D engineer, computational mechanics, R&D verification engineer, CAD senior R&D engineer, etc. At Apple, there's product design engineer, mechanical design engineer, optomechanical process engineer, manufacturing design engineer, manufacturing quality engineer, etc. You probably noticed that all of these are mechanical engineering roles, but they're all different and unique in some way. So the first thing that comes to mind when we hear mechanical engineering is normally analysis. All of your favorite products, whether it's your iPhone, hair dryer, or keyboard, started out as an idea, went through countless iterations, and hours of testing before being sold. To significantly streamline the product development process, mechanical engineers leverage computer-aided engineering or CAE software to predict, analyze, and optimize product performance and failure. Now there are many use cases for CAE software which we'll get into a bit later, but essentially there are two types. We use finite element analysis or FEA software to model solids like metals and polymers and computational fluid dynamics or CFD software to model fluids like water or concrete. There's tons of CAE softwares out there, but the gold standard is ANSYS, which can do it all. ANSYS offers a comprehensive software suite, including ANSYS Fluent for solving fluid problems, ANSYS Mechanical and LS Dyna for complex structural simulations, ZMAX for optical and laser system design, ANSYS Thermal Desktop for heat transfer problems, ANSYS Maxwell for analyzing electromagnetic and electromechanical devices, and a whole lot more. Today's video is brought to you by RAND Simulation. RAND Simulation is an ANSYS Elite Channel partner and a full service engineering firm specializing in all things simulation. RAND Simulation provides consulting services for electromagnetic, structural, fluid, optical, and photonic engineering projects, along with training and support to get your team up to speed with the latest ANSYS software. RAND Simulation also sells ANSYS engineering software to innovative companies across the United States and Canada. Optimize your designs with the latest ANSYS simulation tools by partnering with RAND Simulation today by visiting RANSIM.com by scanning the QR code or visiting the link in the description below. Now the first use case of CAE software is predicting the behavior of your designs early on the product development process way before actual testing of the final product occurs. For example, let's assume you're working at General Electric or Rolls-Royce and you're designing the propelling nozzle 
model of a jet engine. Instead of building and testing thousands of one-to-one -one prototypes in the lab and wind tunnel to find out which combination of shape and size yields the maximum thrust, which is both time consuming and very expensive, mechanical engineers would initially set up simulation models using CFD software to conduct a design of experiments and iterate through all of the design parameters until an optimal solution is found. The second use case is for assessing performance and durability of the product if destructive testing is not feasible or practical due to cost, time constraints, or if the product is very expensive or one of a kind. The third use case is pretty common and is for evaluating the effects of last minute design changes on product performance. Oftentimes as a mechanical engineer, you'll inevitably run into design flaws late into a project. Production ramp up may have already occurred and parts are already coming off the line. In this scenario, there's very limited time to rectify an issue, so we can leverage CAE software to quickly validate the effects of new design changes on product performance and to see if they fix an existing problem or introduce new ones. Now, this is a perfect spot to mention that CAE software is incredibly powerful, but it has its limitations and here's why. First off, it requires the user to have a solid understanding of the math and physics going on behind the scenes. Otherwise, the results can be totally off. In a nutshell, setting up a simulation model correctly requires making the right assumptions, cleaning geometry in the CAD model, specifying loads, material, and boundary conditions, meshing and discretizing the geometry, and solving the problem. Oftentimes models and results need to be validated with real test data to ensure that the FEA model accurately represents the real world behavior of the system or structure that's being analyzed. I actually see a lot of companies making the mistake of investing in CAE software when they don't even actually understand it and think that any mechanical engineer will be able to click some buttons in the GUI and results will magically appear. That's why you see all of the big tech, automotive, and aerospace companies building their own FEA department and hiring mechanical engineers with masters and PhD degrees with a solid background in numerical methods. The smarter, smaller companies will outsource their engineering analysis and simulation work to places like Ransom. I know a lot of mechanical engineers who don't do any design work and only develop and run simulation models for a living and vice versa. Now remember that mechanical engineers don't just do CAE analysis. Depending on the role, they can do other types of analyses. For example, if you're a test engineer, you will likely do more data analysis from running tests and experiments. If you're a manufacturing or process engineer, you will run process capability studies, statistical process control, process flow analysis, and value stream mapping. Product design engineers will do more tolerance stackup and design for manufacturing and assembly analysis. Some more general types of mechanical engineering analyses include root cause and ferro modes and effects analysis. The second thing that comes to mind when we hear mechanical engineering is design. Mechanical engineers almost always design something. Usually it's a product, which includes tangible things like this iPhone or and tangible things like CAD or simulation software. But it doesn't have to be a product. It can be a test fixture or jig or even a manufacturing process used to make iPhones or the clothes that you're wearing. Now, whether it's a product or process, mechanical engineers work with all kinds of people to bring it from an idea to mass production. They'll generally follow a staged process to do this. For example, the product development process contains six key steps, conceptual design, prototype design, detailed design, validation, optimization, and production. And mechanical engineers are heavily involved in all six stages. However, most of the design work happens in these first three stages. We'll use pew charts to narrow down ideas and select the best one to build a proof of concept to demonstrate the feasibility of the design concept. Mechanical engineers typically don't determine the overall product requirements, dimensions, aesthetics, and feel. These things are usually for marketing and industrial designers to figure out. We instead focus on the technical aspect, functionality, and performance of the product and whether the product can be manufactured in the first place and done so cheaply and efficiently using a group of manufacturing processes. 
We use computer-aided design or CAD software to design 3D parts, assemblies, and corresponding 2D technical drawings so that each part can be made later on. SolidWorks, Creo, NX, and Katia are several big name CAD softwares that mechanical engineers use. Of course, the design will constantly evolve as we move throughout the product development process. In the early stages, the design will be pretty high level and the parts will be low volume and used to build prototypes. So the good thing is we don't have to worry about about cost too much at this point and can leverage manufacturing processes like 3D printing and machining to make multiple iterations of our parts. We'll eventually refine the part design for mass production using a combination of manufacturing processes like plastic injection molding, casting, and CNC machining. If Apple or Samsung is making 200 million phones a year, let's just assume we reduce manufacturing costs by a penny or even half a penny we're saving the company 100 or 200 million cents right off the bat. That's 1 million or 2 million dollars, right? So as you can imagine, designing parts that are manufacturable for a particular process is an invaluable skill that employers find extremely attractive. Based on the parts functional and technical requirements, mechanical engineers will also select the optimal material using various systematic approaches, such as an Ashby chart. Now, if you're not designing products as a mechanical engineer, you're probably designing some type of manufacturing process following a similar workflow considering a multitude of factors to ensure efficiency, safety, quality, and cost effectiveness. These types of mechanical engineers are called manufacturing engineers and they need to develop process flows detailing the sequence of operations from raw materials to finished product. They're also responsible for selecting appropriate machinery, equipment, and tools based on the specific requirements of the process. Another big part of their job is material handling, which is how all of the materials are received and transported throughout the manufacturing process. The goal here is to minimize material movement and waste. Similar to how mechanical engineers use CAD software to design products, they also use software to model and design processes like simulate, process model, model and any logic. Next, another big part of mechanical engineering is testing. Every product that's sold needs to be tested for performance, reliability, and safety. At a bare minimum, mechanical engineers need to be familiar with the tests that the parts or products they design have to undergo. For example, most modern day phones are drop tested to quantify durability following a standard such as MIL STD 810. This standard requires five test units to be dropped 26 times, including eight corner drops, 12 edge drops, and six face drops from a height of five feet. Let's take a look at another example. The iPhone 15 received an IP68 rating under IEC standard 60529, which means that it's 100% dustproof and it's waterproof for 30 minutes up to a depth of six meters. To carry out these tests, a sealed dust chamber and special pressure vessels were used by a certified test lab. Of course, if you're not a test engineer, you'll likely not do as much testing. Test engineers focus primarily on testing, which entails developing test plans based on design specifications and stringent test standards, installing test equipment and instrumentation, performing tests, collecting and analyzing data, as well as writing test reports. Whether performing material testing on a universal testing machine or conducting a vehicle rating crash test at NHTSA's test lab, each test requires a lot of meticulous planning, technical expertise, and skilled execution by the test or mechanical engineer. Last but not least is something that most people don't think of when talking about mechanical engineering, and that's quality assurance. Mechanical engineers ensure that products and processes meet quality standards, customer requirements, and regulatory compliance. These types of mechanical engineers are usually referred to as quality engineers. They develop quality plans, implement quality management systems such as ISO 9001, inspect quality of incoming parts from suppliers, auditing suppliers, 
and sorting inventory for defects. They'll work with other types of mechanical engineers such as product design and manufacturing engineers to reach quality metrics such as in-process, final, and ongoing quality control. Now, I think that covers about roughly 90% of what mechanical engineering actually is. The remaining 10% is a bit more trivial, so I won't go into it. Now to summarize, mechanical engineers design, analyze, test, and quality assure products and processes. Company titles for mechanical engineering roles vary based on the nature of the work. There's mechanical engineer, product design engineer, manufacturing or process engineer, CAE, FEA, CFD, or applications engineer, test engineer, quality engineer, and hundreds more. Regardless of the role, mechanical engineering is all about solving different types of problems, whether it's for an employer or your own business. Hopefully I was able to give you a better picture of what mechanical engineering is and all of its possibilities. All right guys, that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my video here where I talk about what I do as a mechanical engineer and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.